Major funding for the Magic School Bus is provided by the National Science Foundation, supporting education and research in science, mathematics, and technology. And Microsoft supports the Magic School Bus and other programs that further learning, exploration, and discovery. Additional funding is provided by U.S. Department of Energy and Carnegie Corporation of New York. And by the Corporation for Public Broadcasting and the annual financial support of viewers like you. Seatbelts, everyone! Please let this be a normal field trip with a friend. No way! Cruising on down Main Street, you're relaxed and feeling good. Next thing that you know, you see it. Octopus in the neighborhood, surfing on the sine wave, swinging through the stars. Yeah. Take a left at Joe and Justin. Take your second right back more on the Magic School Bus. Navigator Nostro, climb on the Magic School Bus. Make a plane turn to Take that. on our Magic School Bus. Drop the river of lava on the Magic School Bus. Such a fine thing to do. So strap your bones right to the seat Come on in and don't be shy Come on. Just to make your day complete You might get baked into a pie On the magic school bus Step inside, it's a wild ride Come on, ride on the magic school bus It all started on a Monday morning Before the first battle but it wasn't just any Monday morning. It was Earth Day, the day we celebrate taking care of our Earth. We'd ordered a surprise Earth Day present for Ms. Frizzle from the Rainforest Rentals catalog, and we were waiting for it to arrive. Mail order? Ha! I call it fail order. Miss Frizzle will be here any minute. Meanwhile, Tim was seriously stuck on his essay assignment. What does Earth Day mean to you? What does Earth Day mean? Well, to me, Earth Day means thinking about how animals and plants all live together. Like those squirrels and that oak tree. That's great, Phoebe. But I don't know what that means, so it can't mean that to me, if you know what I mean. Hey, guys, the present's here. <laughs> it's Earth Day. Do you know where your teacher is? Good morning, class. Happy Earth Day, Miss Frizzle! And Happy Earth Day to all of you! Earth Day, oh, my favorite holiday! We know! So here's a little Earth Day present, Miss Frizzle, from us to you! A present? For me? Oh, you shouldn't have. Why, thank you, Liz. Congratulations, Miss Frizzle! <laughs> You have rented a tree in the rainforest. You are helping to preserve all rainforest plants and animals. <gasps> what a worthwhile gift. Wait, there's more. Oh, my! My very own cocoa tree. How did you know? We know that cocoa trees make cocoa beans, and cocoa beans make chocolate. Oh, my favorite thing on Earth. What a day. And listen to this. As a cocoa tree renter, you are entitled to all the cocoa beans your cocoa tree produces for one year. And here's your first shipment of cocoa beans. Open it! Open it! Open it! Mm -hmm -hmm. <gasps> That's it? One measly shriveled cocoa bean. We've been had. Look, there's a note. Due to circumstances beyond my control, your cocoa tree is temporarily experiencing a cocoa bean shortage. Signed, Inspector 47. A temporary cocoa bean shortage? What's that supposed to mean? It means no cocoa beans. But why? Things don't happen without a reason. Ah, a meaningful point, Tim. I knew that look. I didn't even have to ask, but I did. Miss Frizzle, where are you going? Uh, to the rainforest. Where else? Before the Pledge of Allegiance was pledged, we were on our way to the rainforest. 
to untangle the web of mystery that surrounded the missing cocoa beans. <laughs> Don't worry, guys. According to my sense of truth, justice, and the Milky Way, I'll crack the case of the missing cocoa beans, or my name's not... Detective D.A. What's this? Cool! My own RFI license! What's an RFI? A rainforest investigator. Every continent needs a few. And a rainforest handbook! Now I've got everything! Except a partner. Every good detective has a partner. Dorothy Ann's in charge of the investigation, Tim. And you're in charge of the big picture. The big picture? As big as Earth itself! Before we knew it, we had arrived at the rainforest. Whoa! It's wall-to-wall -wall trees down there! It looks like they're connected to each other. How are we ever going to find Miss Frizzle's tree? As my old parachute instructor used to say, Look before you leap and never jump to conclusions! On the other hand, take over, Liz! Single file, please. Before we jump, I gave everyone a photo of Miss Frizzle's tree. I knew if we could find her tree, we'd find the cocoa bean thief. Look how many different kinds of trees there are. And birds and animals. And insects. Wahoo! Excuse me, guys. Have you seen this tree? Is that a no? Okay, okay, I'm out of here. Ew, what's all this sticky stuff? Hey, Carlos, what's going on? They weren't expecting visitors. Let's get out of here. Wait, yum, fruit juice. Wow, those monkeys are regular juicers for all these ants. Yikes! An anteater! <laughs> This must be his favorite rainforest restaurant. Hey, DA, look at this. There's more than just cocoa trees in the rainforest. There are tons of fruit trees. And if we're looking for suspects, what about these guys? Maybe they like cocoa beans, too. I figured Tim was barking up the wrong tree, so I had to set him straight. Listen, partner, we're looking for this tree and a suspect named Inspector 47. Okay? Well, yeah, but to get the big picture, maybe we need more info. D.A., we've got a match. There's the Frizz's tree. It's your cocoa tree, all right, Miss Frizzle. Oh, it's beautiful. I just want to hug it. Sorry, Miss Frizzle, you can't touch a thing. According to my handbook, we've got a dust for fingerprints. And according to this picture, the tree should be covered with pods. But it's not. There's only flowers. How come? Hmm. There's no sign the pods have been picked. It's as if the cocoa tree just stopped making them. No pods, no beans. But the tree is healthy. Just look at all these flowers. So what's going on? didn't expect to be in the net. Congratulations, DA. Looks like this case is all wrapped up. Carlos! At last! I have captured the cocoa bean thieves! All you've captured is trouble, mister. A rainforest investigator! Mon dieu! My... my humble apologies. Oh! Oh! Oh, please, please do not report me to Inspector One. If he ever found out... I... Wait a minute. Who are you? I am Inspector 47. This is my little patch of a rainforest. Well, this is a tree we rented for Miss Frizzle. Miss Frizzle? 
Ah, and they're students, of course. Uh, you are concerned about the cocoa bean shortage, no? Yes! <laughs> You're not alone. Neither is Miss Frizzle's cocoa tree. It looks like none of these cocoa trees have pods. Well, they used to, but for some reason, all of the pods have gone poof. <laughs> that is the bad news. But the good news is, all the mud wallows have also gone poof. Mud wallows? Oui. Patches of filthy mud filled with the little pools of disgusting water. <laughs> Not only that, I have gotten rid of the horrible bugs and the pesky peccaries. Look, Inspector, we didn't come down here to study mud-free, bug-free, peccary-free zones. We came to crack the case of Ms. Frizzle's missing cocoa beans. Un moment. Inspector 46. Inspector 46? Yes, Inspector 46. My neighbor is madly jealous of my bug-free, peccary-free, mud-free place of work. So he put the curse on my cocoa trees. That is why they no longer produce the cocoa beans. J'accuse, Inspector 46! J'accuse! I wonder if the bugs in peccaries could have something to do with the missing cocoa beans. Stick to the facts, Tim. Just the facts. This is about cocoa beans, period. Hmm, but the question still remains. What would cause healthy cocoa trees to stop making pods? Hey, you guys! Over here! A hummingbird with pollen on its feet. Isn't he cool? Look how he just fits inside the flower. Where's he going? Well... As my cousin B always says, Pod's gotta travel for its wonders to unravel. Okay, so the hummingbird carries pollen from flower to flower, pollinating them so they turn into seeds or fruits or bean pods. Maybe the flowers on Miss Frizzle's tree didn't get pollinated. No pollination, no pods, no beans. That's it. This is a case of missing pollen. And I'm going to prove it. Sorry, DA. No pollen missing here. This cocoa flower is making plenty of it. Okay, so I was wrong. Then suddenly, the case opened up like a flower to a bee. I think it's going to pollinate Miss Frizzle's tree. No way, Arn. This bee is too big to get into a cocoa tree flower. If the bee is too big, then it must be a really tiny insect that carries pollen between the flowers of cocoa trees. So, where are they? Faster than you can say Earth Day, the case of the missing beans had turned into the mystery of the missing insects. And to find the insects, we had to find a cocoa tree with pods. You are now leaving the mud-free zone. Beware of the peccaries the bugs, and the filthy mud. Man, Inspector 47 sure's got a thing about mud. And I've got a hunch it has something to do with the missing cocoa beans. A connection worth detection, Tim. But, Miss Frizzle, what could mud possibly have to do with cocoa beans? Besides, we're searching for teeny insects. Is it just me, or are we about to get down and muddy with a pack of peccaries? Just when it looked like our Earth Day investigation was turning into Mud Day mayhem, Ms. Frizzle gave us a boost. Now that's what I call springing into action. Whoa! Look at all these cocoa trees! And they're loaded with pods! And real live cocoa beans! And where there's a working cocoa tree, we should find our missing insect! I was right! 
The flower was getting pollinated by a teeny weeny insect. Which, by the way, goes by the name of midge fly. So I get it. Midge flies carry the pollen from the flower of one cocoa tree to the next. And the pollinated flowers turn into pods that are filled with cocoa beans that make chocolate. Get the picture, Tim? Got it, Miss Frizzle. It's all in here. Hey, where'd the water come from? Up there. What's that? A bromeliad. Need to take a closer look? Check it out. You're not going to believe it. There's a whole world of life going on here. There's a slug drinking water, an iguana taking a bath, a frog laying eggs, and the eggs hatching into tadpoles. All in the same plant? Yeah. It's like they're all part of the same tiny world, living, eating, and hatching in this one little pool of water. But unlike these midge flies, it's got nothing to do with our cocoa trees. If we could get these midges back to Miss Frizzle's tree, our problem solved. Hold it, DA. What happens when those midges die? We'll be right back where we started. Could the picture be a little bigger than you thought, DA? No way. The solution to this mystery is the midges. I'm sure of it. But, DA, don't you want to know why the midges disappeared? Yeah, things aren't always what they seem, like this bromeliad. It's not just a plant, it's a pond of water, too. And things live in water. Take away the pond, and the slug, the frog, and the insects would all disappear! Damn! Damn. Chuh, chuh. Ugh. What Earth Day means to me. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to Mudville, Tim. Mudville? This is Bugville. DA, quick, your magnifying glass. Just as I suspected, a mud wallow for the peccaries is also home, sweet home, for the midge flies. You're right. It seems that watery mud wallows are the perfect place for laying eggs, hatching larvae, and raising midges. The plot and the mud thickens. I told you mud had something to do with it. Inspector 47 got rid of the peccaries, which got rid of the mud wallows, which got rid of the insects, which got rid of the cocoa pods, because the cocoa flowers never got pollinated. Then Inspector 47 is our culprit after all. But how did he get rid of the peccaries? I think he missed a few. Peccaries Nothing like a pack of peccaries to place us in a perilous predicament. One thing about going on a field trip with Ms. Frizzle, we can always count on a hands-on experience. Pursue those peccaries! Anything in your handbook about how to stop a stampeding peccary? I'm looking! You are now entering the mud-free zone. You are now We're back in Inspector 47's patch of rainforest! Don't go around! Go back! Sure. Get... Go away! <laughs> Look what you have done to my Zod! I will not allow those filthy animals in that patch of the run for us! Those filthy animals, as you put it, are just what your cocoa trees need to make cocoa beans! Of course! It is the peccaries who make the cocoa beans! <laughs> <laughs> she is not only a rainforest investigator, she is a comedian. <laughs> we'll see who has the last laugh, Inspector. It was time to prove our theory and wrap up the case of the missing cocoa beans. For your cocoa trees to make pods with beans, your cocoa flowers need to get pollinated by midge flies. And midges need watery mud wallows to breed in. And mud wallows are made by peccaries. Do you follow me? Then I'll continue.
The peccaries who make the mud wallows left because, well, because the, uh... Whoa, Nilly Bell! <laughs> nice of you to drop in, Tim. Wait a minute. What's this? So that's it. What, what is, is it? it? The peccaries left because there was no ground to wallow in. Because you, Inspector 47, cover the rainforest floor with artificial turf. Is this true? Yes. It is true. But how was I to know a little artificial turf would ruin my coca trees? That's because you didn't know that you were messing up the big picture. Pardonnez-moi? Whether it's the brossom tree that feeds the monkey, that feeds the ant, that feeds the ant ear, or the tree that gives the bromeliad plant a lift to the light, which then gives animals in the trees a place to drink, to eat, and to breed. The truth is, the rainforest is filled with plants and animals that are connected in trillions of ways. And all the connections in this big picture form a web. The web of life. And all plants and animals, including people, squirrels, oak trees, cocoa beans, peccaries, fish, or inspectors, are part of the web. It's what Earth Day is all about. All I wanted was to save all my dry cleaning bills. And mon dieu, I have spoiled the web of life! It can happen, Inspector. But in this case, nothing has been ruined. It hasn't? No! We can repair the link between peccaries and cocoa beans by returning things to the way they were. Can't we? I hope so. I will reap up these filthy artificial turf with my bare hands! And so, the mystery was solved. Artificial turf was history. Tim found the meaning of Earth Day when he figured out the web of life. Ah! And Inspector 47 begged for a pardon from the peccaries. Come back, my pretty peccaries. I have a beautiful mud wallow just for you. The web must be restored soon. It was a happy Earth Day after all. Several months later, Miss Frizzle received another shipment from Rainforest Rentals. All right! Yeah! Look at all those cocoa beans! There was a note from Inspector 47. Due to circumstances beyond my control, your cocoa tree has produced a bumper crop of cocoa beans. Yes! Signed, Inspector 22. Inspector 22? Thanks to you and your students, I got a promotion. Yeah! Is this the magic school bus? Is this the magic school bus? 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 Magic school, magic school bus. bus? I want to play magic school bus! I want to play magic school bus! Magic school bus. Thanks, Liz. Now, give me all your sevens. Hey, 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 come back here. I was winning. Hello, Magic School Bus. Producer speaking. First, I want to know what happened to all those cocoa beans. <coughs> We're roasting them now. Roasting them? Yep. We're making our own chocolate, and roasting the beans is the first step. Anything else? Yes. At the beginning of the show, you showed some squirrels in an oak tree, but you never talked about how they're connected. Good point. The squirrel that buried the acorn was storing food, but squirrels don't dig up all the acorns they bury. Oh, so they also plant seeds for new oak trees. Exactly. I'm glad you brought that up. It's not only the rainforest which depends on the web of life. Everywhere, even in my backyard, there are relationships like that going on right now. How right you are. Thanks for calling. You're welcome. Okay, Liz, how's the chocolate coming? Magic school bus. How about shedding some light on my midge problem? And what midge problem might that be? Well, 
If there were pools of water up in those bromeliad plants, and the midges needed a watery place to breed, why don't they just breed in the bromeliads? Good question. In real life, there are usually more ways for things to happen, but we wanted to keep it simple. Well, you sure kept it simple and silly when it came to Inspector 47. How do you mean? He was the lamest, most overdone, phony baloney official I've ever seen. I mean, he was straight out of a cartoon. Could you hold on for a second? Hello? I heard that coming. Would you like to talk to the young man? Absolutely. Are you calling me a cartoon? Well, that's what you are. Who would run around the rainforest in a white suit, talking like Zeus? I would, and I do. And however you look at it, you and I are connected by the web of life. <laughs> yeah? Well, we won't be connected by telephone if I hang up. <laughs> Drop your bones right to the sea Come on in and don't be shy Come on. Just to make your day complete You might get baked into a pile On the magic scuba uh. Step inside, it's a wild ride Come on, right on the magic scuba Major funding for the magic school bus Is provided by The National Science Foundation Supporting education and research In science, mathematics, and technology and Microsoft supports the Magic School Bus and other programs that further learning, exploration, and discovery. Additional funding is provided by U.S. Department of Energy and Carnegie Corporation of New York. And by the Corporation for Public Broadcasting and the annual financial support of viewers like you. Visit your local library and read more about science in the Magic School Bus and other science books.